In this video, we're going to make a Farcaster frame using transactions, and we're going to mint an NFT using a transaction frame. And I'm going to show you how to debug everything locally, and we're going to have everything on a test network, the base Apolia testnet, so you can test your smart contract in the minting of the NFT without using any real funds. To get started, I'm going to use the framework for building frames. My favorite one is frog.fm right here. We're going to get started. And this is the transaction frames documentation. We're going to look at that in a bit. But to get started, I'm just going to use the Vercel flavor. Open up a console. You want to init frog Vercel. And then we're going to call it frog mint. Okay, and we'll cd into the fragment. And then we'll npm install all the stuff. All right, once everything is installed, this is what we get. We have an API folder, and inside there's this index file. And this is the base frog frame that they have. And we can kind of start it up by using npm run dev. And it's at this API. One thing we can do is add the development tools. So if we want to go to the set the dev tools and copy this stuff into the top here. And then we also want to copy some of this stuff at the bottom. And I'm actually just going to have dev tools on all the time. Just for this, just for this demo. So you'll do Dev Tools. You put the app in there. And now, when you start up the server, we'll have this extra Dev right here. And if we open that up, we'll see our Dev Tools. Zoom in a little bit on that. Okay. If we click on oranges, we can click on apples, oranges, and bananas. And this is the frame that they initially have. So as mentioned in one of my previous videos, all this data right now is untrusted data. We're going to need to use a Farcaster hub and get verified data if we're going to do all anything with these transaction frames. So let's get that set up. I'm going to import the Pinata hub. And I'm going to use it as my main hub because it is a free one to use. So once you activate a hub, it's going to start trying to get like a signing signature, which we don't currently have with our local development server. So if you try to interact with this app, you're going to get some errors right now. It's going to say message is invalid, invalid signer. That's because we don't have a Farcaster account hooked up to our local development. So with Frog, you can try to hook up a Farcaster account. This actually hasn't been working for me. I haven't been able to do this. So the way I do it is with ngrok. So what ngrok does is it's going to take your local server and kind of push it up into the internet so anybody can see it. So your local host is going to give you a new URL that anybody in the world can see. So what you want to do is sign up with ngrok and it's going to be a free plan you don't have to pay for anything. Once you sign up with it, you want to go over here and you open up a new terminal and you can do ngrok HTTP and you want to do whatever your local server is. In my case, it's 5173. That's the local host for here. And if you do that, it's going to pretty quickly spin up a URL for you. It's going to be a bunch of gibberish since it's a free one. And if you go to this URL, you want to visit it first because it's going to have like a splash page saying, do you want to visit this site? And then once you click it, then it's going to start to work. So if we are on the main app, it's not going to work. But if we do slash API, you can see this is actually our local host application. So if we do this one, it's the same thing, right? But with this, anyone on the internet can access it. So now we can go to the Warpcast frame developer validator and paste in our new ngrok API URL, and it's going to start working. It should give us that welcome message. And then this oranges stuff should start working now. Sometimes it takes a while because it's going to hit the ngrok 
and come to your local machine into your local server but when that is all set up all the console logs and stuff that you have it's going to show up here which is really nice you can kind of do a hot reload using the warp cast validator all right so now that we have our local debugging set up we're going to go ahead and dive into the transaction frame documentation. So on here, they're gonna give you a nice example on how to set up a transaction frame. I'm actually gonna start copying a bunch of this stuff because I like the finish. So I'm gonna copy this. Okay, I'm gonna copy the finish route. So basically at the end of the transaction is going to give you the transaction ID. And then you can either send ETH or you can do a mint. So we're going to do a mint of an NFT right here. So I'm going to copy that one. All right, it's going to start erroring, but that's okay. And I don't really need a text input. And I don't really need this other one either. All right, so let's examine some of the code that we have. So we have our hub hooked up, it's the pinata hub. This is our initial frame and it's gonna say perform a transaction and there's only one button and it's gonna to go to mint. So it's gonna to go to this route right here and it's going to call this contract and this is gonna look very familiar if you've ever used VM or the Wagme hooks because the people who made those are the people who made frog.fm and obviously they would use VM to do any contract interactions. So all this stuff should look familiar if you ever use those services. And right here, the c.contract, this is what act, going to act, execute an actual contract for you. Now there are some things we're gonna to wanna to change. So first one is this, this chain ID right here. Right now it's at EIP, uh, the chain ID is 10. I believe that is OP mainnet, which we don't wanna use because that is real money. We can use um, base Apolia, which is fake money. So we want to import the ID for that. And since they have VM as a dependency, you can do VM chains, I believe. Okay, so now we're gonna import base Apolia. And instead of this 10, we're gonna use the base Apolia chain ID. So I wanna change these to little back ticks. And now we can use dot ID. All right, so now if we look at the dot ID, so the base of Polya chain ID is 84532. So that is the chain that we're going to want to do this on. And all this other stuff is going to depend on your smart contract. And this ABI is also going to depend on your smart contract. So we're actually going to come over here and I have a smart contract made already, but I will copy that stuff into here. So ABI.TS. So we're going to want to fill this out and we're going to want to put that into here. So the smart contract that I'm going to use is I made it with third web. That's because they have all these like contracts ready to go. It's very easy to deploy. You just need some of the base Apolia testnet ETH and you can pick one of the contracts you want to use and deploy it. So the one I picked was the addition drop right here. And they give you like a nice WYSIWYG to set up your smart contract. It's kind of like a no code smart contract creator, which is really cool. So this is the NFT that I made, some sort of funny meme token NFT based with hat. And you can see that it is actually deployed on the base Apolia block explorer. So this contract exists. So what we wanna do is we're gonna to wanna to copy this contract ID, this contract address. We're gonna to wanna to replace the two line with our contract address. We don't really need a value since this one is a free mint. And for the ABI, we're gonna to want to come into here. And under sources, if you're using third web, this is where you would find it. If you made your own smart contract, you should have this ABI available to you as well. But for me, the ABI is under here. So all this stuff, I'm just gonna copy it. Come over here, um, export const ABI equals all that stuff. And you wanna do as const for the TypeScript stuff. Okay, so the whole ABI is super long. Probably don't need all these, but whatever. And now I'm going to import the ABI from that. Now the ABI is hooked up. So let's kind of delete some of this nonsense. So once the ABI has hooked up, 
And since this is using VM, it's going to give you all the TypeScript goodness that it comes with. So it's going to say function name mint. So mint actually is not the function name that we want to call because it does not exist on our API. And it's saying this does not exist right now. So the one we're going to want to use is called claim. Yeah. So claim is the one we're going to use. You can see that it takes in all these arguments, but we'll fill those out later. So we'll want claim. So now that word, that squiggly goes away, and now we're going to get a new one saying this is not the arguments that we are expecting. So let me actually copy this because it's a big list. So this is the actual arguments that we are expecting. So it's going to have the address, so the wallet address that you're minting to. And then some of it's like, I forgot what all of it is. It's a very complicated contract, to be honest. It probably should have done a simpler one, but this was easy to set up. So the token ID uh, for this. So this is a uh, NFT. It's a it's an ERC-1155, and the token ID for this one that I made is token zero. So all that stuff comes into here. And then what's missing is this address. So this is the address that we're going to kind of mint to. And when you have all that verified stuff set up, you can find address off of this C, I believe. Yeah, so address. So it's wanting a string, but this one is wanting a 0x string. So what we want to do is we want to do address equals c.address as address as the type of address. And we can actually get this from VM as well. So we'll import type address from VM. All right, so now this should be the proper address type, 0x string. And now this should be 0x string, and everybody's happy. There's no red squigglies. So now this should work, right? So we have to double check everything, make sure, I mean, double check, this is all on base of polio, so it's fake, but double check just in case. So this should be the right contract address over here. Looks like it is. So now how do we test this out? Well, we go back to our validator and let's actually shrink this down a little bit and we can do a console log just to show you that the console logs work so if we do a console log of the address so there was a lot of changes going on I'm going to stop that and rerun it and it's going to restart it and as long as you have this ngrok tab open it's going to be fine it's automatically going to pick it up again so I'm going to reload this perform a transaction so that is our initial frame all right, so now if we go to Mint, it's going to start doing the transaction. All right, so now you see that console log here. So it's working that you can see it locally, that console log. And now it's going to ask you to, I'm going to make this bigger. It's going to ask you to go continue with the transaction. Is It's using a different account right here. I want to use my MetaMask account because it has this base of Polia ETH. So you can go and change it, disconnect that. And then if you go to Mint again, it's going to have you connect the wallet. I'm going to connect my MetaMask wallet right here. So the address is this 49561. Let's make sure that's cool. 4956 looks right. And in our console log, you can see that the address has indeed changed. So this is the address we're going to Mint to. And then we're going to continue, continue in the wallet. And it's going to pop up. You're going to pay the fees. This is a free Mint, so it's just going to do that and now it's going to return us to the feed the product now the mint is going through so this is the transaction ID and if we go back to here you can see that that supply increased to four right so now we've minted a new one to this address and if we go to our like local Explorer our local like events so this is the transaction that we just minted using our frame developing everything locally now once you're done and everything's tested, you can change this back to like base, you know, deploy on base or whatever. You want to change this to base. You want to replace this with a newly deployed contract on base and then you're good to go. That's basically it. Let me know if this video was helpful to you. If you want anything else about transaction frames, leave them in the comments below. Give the video a like, a thumbs up, and a subscribe to the channel. Thank you.